Hey guys, Mike here, and I am going to go through my top 10 games that I am looking forward to that are going to be coming out this year at Gen Con. Originally, when I started this list, I really only had seven or eight, but I went through the list again and looked, and I actually found it and made it to 10. Um, these games, though, are, are games that are going to be coming out at or in one case, very, very close to Gen Con. So games like Seventh Continent and Rising Sun and Pandemic Season, uh, Legacy Season 2, those games, I know they're not coming out at Gen Con. They're just going to be demoed and previewed there. So those games, I'm not really going through. And when we get closer to their launch, we'll, we'll talk about these. So these 10 games I've got are coming out, so you should be able to either buy them at Gen Con or they should be in distribution for most case, fairly short thereafter, all right? So here we go. My number 10. My number 10 game is First Martians by Portal Games. First Martians uh, really was really high on my list. In fact, it used to be probably number one or two if you would have asked me a couple months ago. But really, I've gotten a little bit cool on the game uh, on some of the early reviews and the early comments that have come out from people who have gotten their pre-orders already. Some of them have not been that great. I, they really take the Robinson Crusoe mechanism and that co-op type game, but I think they've tweaked it in a way that has not gone over great with everybody. Now, I'm still going to give it a chance. I still think it looks great. It's Robinson Crusoe on Mars. It's using hard science, being a little less unbelievable and a little bit more rooted in science, so I think it looks great. Uh, I just am leery now because of some of the reviews that have come out. Hey, that's not always a bad thing, you know, so, you know, maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. But I'm just a bit more hesitant than I was, say, a couple months ago. So that's my number 10, First Martians. My number 9 is Whistle Stop by Bezier Games. Uh, Whistle Stop looks neat because it's a train game, which I like train games, um, but this one also is a tile placement game, which is a bit of a puzzle. Uh, instead of just placing tiles uh, to build your railroad, you're putting sort of a puzzle together so that you can get your trains in the best area to pick up so that you can meet the delivery requirements on the other side of the board, um, which is kind of interesting. In the, and also, you have more than one train. You've got multiple trains along the East Coast side that you can move to the West Coast, so you can go ahead and unlock some of the routes that you want for some of the uh, for, with one train and then use another train to do the pickup part I think I think that's how it works and it looks pretty neat um, in addition they've got player powers that you can unlock and you can purchase as upgrades for your for your train for your system but the neat part is it doesn't matter if you're the first one to buy it because someone else can actually buy it off of you and use it which is a neat mechanism because that means that the, the first advantage you know, to get something is really not there because someone can just buy it from you and take it. So I like that. I think it looks neat. I heard this was at Dice Tower Con, but I didn't get a chance to go take a look at it. So I'm actually anxious to see how it looks. Um, it looks like it's fun. It looks like it's kind of a train game and a puzzle game put together. And I think that sounds interesting. So that's my number nine, Whistle Stop. My number eight is a, is a pretty interesting game from Pandasaurus Games. It's called Wasteland Express Delivery Service. It's another pickup and deliver game, which is interesting that I have them beside each other there. Uh, but it's got a really cool looking theme. When you look at it, it's again a pickup delivery in a post-apocalyptic type environment, which is neat because to me it gives that Mad Max feel to it. Uh, you know, I kind of feel like I'm running supplies across the, the barren area and I'm, at any moment some renegades are going to come out on motorcycles and come and attack me and that's really the feel that I got when I looked and I saw this game was that I'm tr it's that stress trying to get to the other side get to your delivery before the bandits or when the bandits come and attack you and you have to defend against them I think it's got great art it's got a little bit of miniatures in it which is not too much um, so again, I, and I think they look really neat and it's also got a narrative to it as well from what I understand is so that there's a 10 narrative storyline that goes along as you play the game. And I think that's really neat. It kind of gives you that motivation to kind of keep going to get that and keep perpetuating that story, which I think is something pretty neat in a pickup and delivery game. So I'm looking forward to this. This is Wasteland Express Delivery Service. All right, my number seven game is actually one that I'm kind of cheating about, I said. Uh, this one actually doesn't release until I think 
September, October time frame, so it's right after Gen Con, but I know you'll be able to demo it, and I know you'll be able to be taking pre-orders for it sometime in the end of the summertime, so either late July, or early August, I think they're already going to start taking pre-orders, and that's for Fallout Waste, uh, Wasteland Warfare. Uh, this is a miniatures game based in the Fallout universe, and I think that's pretty neat because what they didn't do is they didn't take the Fallout game that's on the consoles and port that directly over to a board game. They actually are just using the IP and the settings and they're making a miniatures game out of it. And I think it's pretty neat looking. One of the things that I really like about it is how they're, it's almost like an introductory mini miniatures game it seems. It doesn't seem like it's large armies. It seems to be much smaller uh, on scale. And it also seems that they are using, instead of using tape measures and a lot of tables, they have these measuring tools that come with it so that it makes it pretty easy and pretty quick to play. That's what it looks like right now. So that's pretty interesting. The miniatures that they've got there, they look absolutely amazing. Uh, I've seen uh, the pictures they show and I, and I actually think they might be in resin, which would be fantastic if we get resin miniatures out of this, but uh, the detail would just be exquisite. So I'm really looking forward to that. I like the scenery that's used in it. I think it's neat to have a post-apocalyptic type scenery, but not so far like as Warhammer 40k but something you know in the Walking Dead type range I think that scenery would be fun to, to do and fun to work up the other the one last thing I like about this game is it has a narrative to it uh, the it's got some missions that you go on and even has some side missions it reminds me almost of like Gloomhaven where you've got your main storyline but then every once in a while you branch off onto a side mission and I think that looks pretty cool and pretty fun they even said that they're going to continue putting out new missions uh, to continue the story after the game is already released. So I think that's neat to keep the game fresh and to keep the game going. Um, I think that's a great thing to do. Uh, I, again, I said I love the miniatures. I love the way it looks. So to me, this is a, a pretty interesting game, but you won't be able to get it at Gen Con, but you'll be able to get it right after Gen Con. Number six, uh, number six is called Combat Infantry. It is by Columbia Games. This is a pretty interesting game because I like war games and I like tactical war games. This is supposed to be a fast paced tactical warfare game that has lots of, it's called, they said, tactical realism, which I think is pretty neat because I like realistic war games, you know, such some of the more in depth ones, you know, Squad Leader, um, Advanced Third Reich, some games like that where you're really in depth, but the problem with those, which we all know, is the rules get crazy and the game gets really, really in depth. This is supposed to give you some of that feel and flavor, but without the massive in depth rule book. And I think, again, I really love that. It's also a block game. One of the issues I have in some of the other war games, again, is the fact that you can see exactly what units or up ahead and come, and you know, and th that fog of war system's not really well developed. However, in combat infantry, they seem to have a really innovative, well, not super innovative, it's using the blocks, but again, it's got that fog of war, so you may or may not know what type of, uh, in, you know, what type of infantry or what type of armor even you're coming up against as you're going through the, you know, through a city. And I think that's neat, it adds to that tension, and it also adds to the tactics that you're gonna use. If you hear armor, you're gonna make sure that you're keeping or have protected your anti-tank type troops. Whereas if you don't hear it and you see a bunch of units, you don't know you got a whole squad of regular you know, machine gunners or do you have a bunch of uh, local militia you know, not quite World War II, but you know what I'm saying, you know, not trained guys that, you know, so interesting what you come up upon. So I think that's a really neat mechanism with that fog of war that they use in a World War II uh, tactical war game. In addition, they've got a lot of neat units. Uh, I've seen uh, infantry, uh, anti-tank, vehicles, and, and tanks. So I think it's a neat, it's a neat game and it's, I think it's a neat way to bring people into the wargaming genre, which I think is very important. So taking a little bit of the more mainstream war games with the block games and, and blending that with some more of the tactical realism that you see in some of the more hardcore war games is a great blend to introduce people into this genre to see if they're really gonna like it. So I was really inter interested in it and that's Combat Infantry. All right, my number five game. My number five game is Mini Rails by Modius Games. Now, I am an 18xx fan. I said it, it's out there. But really, I like the thought of being an 18xx fan more than an 18xx fan. 
because I like the game, but I really have played the majority of my playthroughs on the computer using the old DOS box and, and the old DOS computer game that was out, you know, many years ago. Um, I, it's a great way to play because I don't have to do all that math real time at the table with, with five other players, which is a pain. That, and the game on the computer only lasts about an hour where it's a good five hours when you play this live. So, but I like the style of game. I like the stock mark manipulation, the take that, the kind of, you know, that mindset where it's not a railroad game, it's a stock game, but you love to play, you know, I love railroads, so, you know, it's that hybrid, so it's that, it's a constant thing. I would love to run a great company, but it's not the game. The game is make sure I got stock and I can buy it and sell it and manipulate the stock to get the most money. So, okay, all that being said, Mini Rails um, looks like it's an 18xx light game um, because it looks like it's got the stock, stock manipulation, but it looks like it only plays in an hour, which I like. So I think it's going to be a great way to get the feel and the flavor of the 18xx games, like 1830, but you don't have to quite commit six hours to it, you know? So I like that, and I like the fact that it looks easy to play as far as I mean that I think that the way it works is you have two types of moves in a turn you either build track or you buy stock which means you can get a lot of people to the table to try it and again and it also sound like combat infantry is an intro to a much deeper world if someone wants to go deeper now again there's not a ton of people that want to go deeper into 1830 1846 but again it gives you the flavor of a stock trading game with railroads then you kind of get the idea of it but yet you don't have to commit the time. And again, it looks like it'll give me that and scratch that itch when I want to play a stock trading game with railroads. I can look at mini rails. Also, mini rails used, it has previously only been available overseas. So if you're going to Gen Con and you're interested in this, you better go pick it up there because they, from as of right now, which is the end of July, I don't believe they have distribution set up for the United States. So if you're there at Gen Con, you might want to pick this up because the opportunity to pick it up might not be there in the future. That's Mini Rails by Modius Games. My number four. My number four, I'm sure it's not going to be on a ton of people's lists. Uh, I love playing games with tons of people. I love the interaction. And I, if I like to just play games, I can play games on a console on the computer. But, but what I don't, what I miss there is the interaction with people. I love that. I love, if you go back and see one of our games that we played uh, on the channel, I think it was around the 4th of July, we, it was uh, the family gaming one where I was there. We had uh, seven of us playing Shadows Over Camelot. It was r rowdy and, and, and loud, and we were you know laughing and carrying on. I love that. But I'm not a huge party game fan because some of them don't have the depth. One game coming out, again, by Pandasaurus Games, which is their second game that I've found uh, that I'm interested in, is called Red Scare. It's got a cool theme. It's set, you know, again, during the Cold War, 1970s, 1980s, where you've got, you hand out cards to everybody. And they kind of see what faction, are they a patriot or are they a Russian? And then half the players there at the table have the old 1980s 3D glasses. You know, I'm not talking about new ones. I'm talking about the old red and blue 3D glasses, and the other half do not. You then dealt out cards, and on the cards, you can see some of the information, but you can't get all of it. If you have the 3D glasses, you can read some. If you don't have the 3D glasses, you see the other part. So you have to kind of use both types of people to understand what you have. So there's a, the part of the game is I'm trying to see first, who else do I think is on my side that I can give my cards to to look at? They look at the cards and then they announce what you've got. Again, and it could be what you're trying to do in the game is you're trying to free all of your people, you know, try to get them out. So all of the Russians are trying to get the Russian players out and all of the Patriots are trying to get the Patriot players out. And they've got these little cards. So the, the players look at the cards and then they hand three cards to another player, you know, who doesn't or does have the 3D glasses. They then announce to the group what you handed them. Now, they don't have to tell the truth. So if you hand it to somebody of the opposite faction and you're Russian and you're trying to get you're trying to collect Russian cards, he might say, "Oh, you've got three Patriot cards." And like, oh man, I really thought I had two Patriots and a Ru you know, but you know, you don't know. 
So there's that, and then you trade. So you so there's a lot of fun of trying to figure out who's on your team, who's not on your team. There's a neat little mechanism with the 3D glasses. So I, to me, it seems like it's a fun game. It seems like it'd be a fun party game with a little bit of strategy in there. That so and it just seems fun. Uh, I don't do a lot of these games, but when I do, this one's got a great looking theme. I like the gimmick with the 3D, old school 3D gr glasses. I think that'll be fun. So uh, if you get a bunch of people and you're really into it, I think it could be a lot of fun. So that's Red Scare from Pandasaurus Games. All right, my number three game. My number three game is interesting because I told you at the beginning I didn't have 10 games. This was one, my number three, that either it was going to be high on my list or not at all. And that game is This War of Mine by Gallica Games. I think I said Gallica Games. This game, mechanics-wise, really intrigues me. Um, the best part, I think, about it is the way that the game says it plays, it's a co-op game, and it says you don't even need to read the rules, you just jump right in and start playing. Hey, being the rules guy, that's a fantastic mechanism in my opinion. Um, but it sounds like, again, this minor setup for the rules and you jump right in. The premise of the game is, is it's a co-op game where you are civilians in a war zone and your mission is to basically survive and it's a co-op game where you're trying to survive being in a war zone. So you're not actually doing any of the fighting, you're the civilians. And I'm going to get back to that in a minute. But it sounds really neat because it's got a big story comp component to it where they call this thing the script book. And it's got hundreds and hundreds of little scripts. And when other you meet other NPCs that come into, non-player characters that come to meet the group, you read from the script book and it tells you about them and then you make a decision and it's neat because there's a leader mechanic so like it's the leader so it kind of leader rotates around and when you meet a person the group can kind of say what's going to happen but the leader makes the decision and what they decide is what goes so they get an input but they make the call so they make the call and then based on what they do will affect you later on in the game. Uh, we've seen that mechanism before, but here I hear it's really strong in this, in this game. Um, and that kind of leads into why it wasn't gonna make my list. This theme is gonna be super depressing and you're gonna make some super hard choices. I mean, I hear like, you know, like a little family comes up and they need food. You know, you're gonna look around and say, you know, we don't have enough. And you're gonna say, look, back to the street with you. You know, and it's and then it gets even more you know hard than that. I've heard. Um, so while I, I love a great theme and I'd love to get immersed in a game. I think in this one I'm going to have to almost step back a bit. And remember, hey, it's just a game. We're not you know you know we're not in that war. But you know what I don't want to do is I don't want to come back from a game and be depressed. So that was why I struggled with this game. I struggled with this game all the way up until the minute I turned on the camera. Is I I didn't know if I would like it, but I'm intrigued by the theme, uh, by, the, by the mechanisms and the mechanics of the game, and I love a story-driven game. So I'll probably want to try it, but there's a good possibility if I, you know, if I can't disconnect enough or I get too depressed after I get done, it may never hit the table again. So again, I, I hope they take the mechanism and they can find another way to use it so that I don't feel depressed when I get done playing a game that's for fun. So again, I also think though, I like war games. I like to see perspectives of how things are, and I think it would be a great perspective, maybe only once, to see what it's like to be a civilian in a war. Uh, you know, I play a lot of the World War II games, you know, and a lot of times you're going through the city, but you never see the people in there. So it might give me a great perspective of what it's like to live as those people as two warring factions are going through and destroying the city. So for an educational purpose alone, this is really, you know, piqued my interest. And again, it's number three because I really think it's either going to be a home run or something that I just can't disconnect enough from and I can't play again. So that's my number three game, This War of Mine. All right, my number two game. My number two game, I actually have a uh, pre-copy for this, uh, but it does release at Gen Con, and that is Battle Stations, second edition by Guerrilla Games. Uh, depending upon, like I said, when this movie gets, this video gets put out, we may or may not have actually already played this game. So keep an eye on the channel. I think we're playing it at the end of July. So 
depending upon when you see this, check out the channel and you might get to see us play this. This game looks great. What I like about this game is I like our I like role-playing games. I, I play them often. Right now I've been taking a bit of a break because I haven't seen how I can fit my role-playing games in with my with working on the channel, but we're getting there. But what I like about role-playing games is the freedom that you've got. I love the ability that, you know, if you've got a good GM, creative GM, you know, they said, look, you're in a bar scene. All of a sudden you're in the tavern. Three guys come in, start shouting, shooting and all kinds of stuff. What do you do? Well, I love to say, you know what? What I want to do is I'm going to jump behind this table, flip it over, throw a bar stool, pull my guns out, and get ready to fire. Most board games don't have that mechanism for that. Because then what wants to happen is the guy who's playing beside me says, you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to run. He's going to give me a lift. I'm going to you know, get thrown up in the air. I'm going to grab the chandelier, do a backflip, and as I'm backflipping, I want to shoot two guys upside down. GM's going to be like, okay, and then it's going to tell you your roles. That's fun. You get ultimate creativity, and I believe that that kind of creativity is in Battle Stations. Battle Stations is a big game. It plays one to eight, and it's a one versus many, so you've got one player playing everybody else, and then you've got the seven other people who are aspects of this big space station. They've got their own boards, they've got their own ships, and... What's cool is as things unfold, you have, I hear, a ton of freedom as to what you can do. Uh, you know, in most games, it's like, oh, the ships are coming in, all right, so we man the guns and we start shooting. I think in this game, they've, I've heard people say, well, what I did was I decided to transport myself onto their ship and go into hand-to-hand -hand combat with the captain, take that ship, turn it around, and fire it back at the enemies. Meanwhile, someone else decided to transport a bomb onto their ship, you know, so you get these crazy things, and the, and the other player doesn't... You're not limited by your GM's creativity. I think there's actual mechanics in the game for a lot of this type of, you know, openness. And I think that's, that's really cool. In fact, it's so much like an RPG, it actually comes with an advanced player's guide, which allows you to build your characters and even run it a bit like a role-playing game. So, to me, that sounds like a lot of fun. I haven't seen any playthroughs of this, but I've seen video, I mean, I've seen reviews and I've seen some pictures, and it looks great. So again, I think it'll be a lot of fun to have that creativity in a board game. And again, the more people we can get to the table, the merrier. So that's my number two, Battle Stations by Guerrilla Games. All right, my number one game I'm looking forward to at Gen Con this year is The Expanse, the board game by WizKids. The Expanse, the board game, is based off of a television show on the Sci-Fi Network. So if you've ever seen The Expanse, it's a really great uh, show. Uh, my wife and I love it. She even loves it more than I do. But it's a really cool show about the tensions between the inhabitants of Earth, Mars, and then right in between, you've got, they call them the belters, the people that live on the asteroid belt in between. And that's really cool because all three of the different factions, their society is very, very different and very unique. And the show kind of goes through the tensions there. And the game is supposed to also simulate the tensions, not war. And it's supposed to be based off of the Twilight Struggle type game system. Well, I love Twilight Struggle. I think that's a great game. The only problem, I've got two issues with Twilight Struggle. And that is, one, it's long. And two, if you're playing with someone who has not played a lot, you're going to destroy them. And it's not because you're a better player. It's because you know what cards are out there. That irritates me about Twilight Struggle. And I'm hoping that that does not carry over to The Expanse because that's a, that's a limiter. Because if I'm going to dedicate... A couple hours. Now that's another thing though, the expanse is supposed to be a good bit shorter as well. But say I'm going to dedicate an hour and a half to play a, a political thriller, a, a political tension type game with another opponent, I want it to be fair. I don't want to have to hold back the whole time because hey, who knows when you're going to get to play again with them. So you want to be able to go all out all the time because it's more fun that way. So I'm hoping that the expanse, you know, rectifies that problem. That it doesn't have, that if you know the decks better, then you're going to win. So I, I, I'm looking forward to that. The other fun thing is about The Expanse. Now, not a lot of information is out there. In fact, the, the board 
the only pictures that I've seen are actually the, the board covers, the front and back of the box that, uh, that I post up, put it up there. That was the only things I've actually even found. So um, it says two to four players. Now, some games say two to four players, like Rebellion says two to four players, but it's not four players. It's just two players on the team. I don't want to play teams. So I don't want to play a four-player game. But then again, to me, it seems like it should be a three-player game. There's three main factions in the, in the show. Now, they might do a fourth one with the Rebels, but so I don't know. So I'd have to see more. But I'm hoping it's unique enough that you could play four players, completely unique factions and not on teams. Because again, I think that would be great. I think that the political tensions and the struggles and the maneuvering that's done that the show kind of hints at and shows you is in that game because it's, it's going to be great. We are trying to build up an army, but not too overtly, because if you do it too overtly, you're going to actually trigger all out war. So it's, I think it really looks great. And I think WizKids is making it. So it really looks like it's going to be a great production of the pictures that we've seen. And I really think that, you know, a quicker, more uh, tight, streamlined Twilight Struggle sounds like a winner to me so that's why it's my number one game this year from gen con and that is the expanse the board game by whiz kids so guys that is what i am looking forward to this year at gen con i'm going to give rob my list because i won't be there so i hope he can pick up some of these games i don't know for sure if so, if we have any crossover because i actually didn't see his video yet um i have a feeling we've got a couple uh i have a feeling that there's there's some that are only going to be on mine he is not a party game guy so I don't think he's going to have Red Scare on his. Um, but I'm pretty sure maybe like co uh, Combat Infantry might overlap. Um, so we'll have to see. So that'd be great to see. So I'm going to be giving him my list to say, you know, take a look at these games and see what you think. Hopefully he can pick up some or all of them. And hey, we can get them to the table. And you can see for yourself whether or not I picked any good ones or I picked some duds. We'll see. If you're going to be at Gen Con, make sure you go find Rob. He'll be at the Dice Tower booth most of the time. He'll be out on the floor. You can't miss him. If you guys are going great have a great time it's a lot of fun i went last year this year is going to be crazy they sold out of the four day passes and it's going to be a crazy scene it's you're going to have a blast if you're there you're going to be exhausted when you get home but make sure you come and check out rob tell him you know tell him what you think of the channel tell him what we can do better tell him you know do arm wrestle him if you if you wish but just come up and see him let him know how you're doing guys if you liked what i did Definitely look below, leave some comments, tell me what you're looking forward to and what you think are going to be some of the great games that are going to come out at Gen Con 50 this year. And hey, uh, maybe I'll take a, uh, take a look at a couple other ones based on your comments, all right? Thanks for watching, and if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and tell us how we're doing. Thanks a lot.